It's rare that we lose a driver in Formula One, but last year, in 2019, at the Belgian Grand Prix, we lost Antoine Hubert on the Saturday in an F2 race. And in this video, I'll go through what transpired at Spa on the last day of August, 2019. <laughs> Motor racing is a dangerous game, and no more so than on August 31, 2019, when young Frenchman, 22-year-old Antoine Hubert, passed away at Spa. Allow me to share with you my memories from that particular weekend. And I'll start in the media center after F1 qualifying. I'd finished shooting, I'd gone up to edit. And at one point there were just oohs and ahs and everybody stopped. It came to a complete silence as we all focused on the television screens. And what we saw was the aftermath of a huge crash. Cars strewn everywhere, debris, the race was stopped. And we all just looked at this screen and then they replayed the incident with Giuliano Alesi coming off on the left, spearing back across the track, he had a puncture. Uh, Antoine Hubert moved to the right to avoid it, hit the outside barrier, came back onto the track and was T-boned at considerable speed by Juan Manuel Correa. It was horrific to watch and they replayed it I think a couple of times and then from memory they went to a wide shot, which is often the case when uh, television thinks that there may be a fatality. I can't remember if the television broadcast was just stopped then or whether it was just on the wide shot, but it was some time before uh, somebody else in the media center had found some vision on the internet and a few people were standing around watching that and once again we had this tremendous oohs and ahs from people who were watching it. And I remember looking over someone's shoulder at the incident again and thinking that is savage, that is high speed and can anybody survive it? I didn't think so. I think it was around about 6.15 that I left and I took the bus from the media centre back across the track. And as we got over the track you can look up from the bus and see this view and all I could see at the top of the track was flashing lights and that still remains with me today, that memory. Lots of emergency vehicles. As I got in the car, I remember looking at my Instagram feed and I think it was just after it was officially announced that Antoine had died, I think that was 6.35 p.m. on the Saturday afternoon, Charles Leclerc posted RIP Antoine and that was the moment that I realized that he passed away. I then drove back to my hotel and I remember having a chat with some people staying there who were involved with F1 and they had access to the G-forces from all the cars and the different events and they'd said they'd looked at the data and it was horrific as he was T-boned by Juan Manuel and uh, those guys thought there was no way that anyone could survive that sort of impact. On the Sunday morning I arrived early and before I photographed drivers arriving I went up to the top of the track and I was surprised to see all of the emergency vehicles spread out two by two along that particular section of the track in honor of Antoine. Mid-morning or around lunchtime, I think I was looking at all these people walking in the same direction. And I thought, what's going on here? And I followed them up to the grid and realized that uh, there was a presentation, a ceremony on the grid prior to the F3 race. Now that was one of the most amazing um, periods of my time in F1, I've only been there three years, I've never seen anyone die at the track. It was heart-wrenching and very emotional. There were F2 drivers, F2 teams, F3 drivers and teams, F1 drivers and teams. There was media, luminaries from every part of the Formula world out on this track and centre stage was mum Natalie and Antoine's brother Victor. Now Natalie, I understand, had driven five hours from Paris to Spa to be there to front the media. On the day after, she'd lost her son. Now, that showed great strength and I think you'll find that everybody was absolutely in awe of her. She was very much center stage, her and Victor holding the pink and white helmet of Antoine for most of the ceremony. It went on for, I'm thinking, 10 to 15 minutes. There were some speeches. I can't even remember what was said, but what I do remember vividly afterward, it was a line of mainly young, drivers, F2 drivers, late teens, early 20s, young boys, many without their families. You had Giuliano Alesi, who I thought uh, looked like he'd had no sleep that night. He was crushed. Mick Schumacher, the same. Charles Leclerc came up to console Natalie, but I think in the end, it was more Antoine's mum consoling Charles, who had to front up to a race in a couple of hours time. Those scenes were, were just the most gut-wrenching 
And certainly there were tears in my eyes and everyone else's around me. But then that group dispersed. Everyone went back to doing what they were doing. Everyone came out for the Formula One race and there was another ceremony on the track with all of the F1 drivers seen by millions around the world. Then we had a race. Charles Leclerc won. He came back into Parc Ferme after his win, dedicates it to Antoine. Up on the podium, there was no celebrating, simply holds his trophy aloft, points his finger to the sky, no champagne passed his lips, and the three drivers just calmly moved off. Many months later, I was watching the Drive to Survive series, and uh, at one particular instance, they had an interview with Lewis Hamilton, and this was at the moment of the crash, and he stops halfway through that interview, and he just looks up at the screen, and you could see his care and his compassion in his eyes when he realised that this was indeed a savage instant. And if you haven't seen that, I would urge you to go and find it, and it still makes me tingle when I watch it. Over that weekend, luminaries of the sport were interviewed, people like Jackie Stewart, who said, it is very sad, but it is something motor racing, unfortunately, must accept. Antoine was a member of the Renault Young Driver Academy, and Alain Prost had this to say. He was a nice kid, very clever, very curious. There are no words. He was too young to die. Almost everybody is that dies in a racing incident. Many of the team personnel wore black armbands, as you can imagine. Drivers like Pierre Gasly were especially hard hit. He'd roomed with Antoine for some time, and they were great friends. Yes, motorsport is dangerous, but that's what gets young men and women onto the track, that adrenaline rush, the thrill of pushing a car to its very limits. It's what gets fans excited. It's what gets you watching on television, but occasionally, things do turn to tragedy, as it did with Antoine Hubert, as it did with Jules Bianchi in 2015 in Suzuka, as it was with Ayrton Senna in 1994 at Imola. But you know what? You and I will still continue to watch. We'll still have passion for this great sport. And Antoine Hubert, he'll never grow old. We'll always remember him like this.